Did I forget something? Um, yeah. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 rom-com TV series. You in the mood for some steak freak? Absolutely. For this list, we'll be looking at our favorite TV shows and miniseries in the romantic comedy genre. What's your favorite romantic series? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Love Sweet Home Alabama? Ugh. Lies? What women want? Ugh. Lies? Emmy Award winner Judd Apatow is best known for writing and directing comedy movies such as Knocked Up and The 40-Year-Old Virgin. He specializes in rom-coms with a male gaze, but in love, we get both the male and female perspectives. The two protagonists, Mickey and Gus, are realistically baggage-ridden. Is that why you guys broke up? Because of your affair with fast food? Yeah, uh-huh. She uh, caught me fooling around with a Big Mac once. Yeah, she like walked in on us and I was like playing with its boobs. I regret making that joke. They've both got their problems and aren't immediately lovable. However, the leads put in strong performances and win us round to the characters' quirks, as the two misfits build a genuinely sweet relationship. Love is a self-described, down-to-earth look at dating with plenty of humor and a real sensitive side. That's perfect. You're perfect. You're perfect. Number 9. Emily in Paris Emily in Paris has divided critics since its release in 2020, but there's a reason we keep tuning in. And his name is Gabriel. Seriously though, there's more to it than that. There's Alfie too. You're serious about things I like. Oh really? Hmm. Like what? Created by Sex in the City's Darren Starr, the show follows a chirpy marketing assistant who relocates to Paris to work for the French branch of her company. Culture clash ensues, and Emily struggles to come to grips with the Parisian way of life. First, let me apologize for speaking English. I did Rosetta Stone on the plane, but it hasn't kicked in yet. At least there's plenty of romance to be found. The Devil Wears Prada designer, Patricia Fields, takes the lead on Emily's memorable looks, and the ensemble cast is great fun. But the real star of the show is Paris itself. I want to know where and what you guys want to see. I am your eyes and ears to this beautiful city. Number 8. Four Weddings and a Funeral Mindy Kaling is fast becoming the queen of rom-com TV series. No, it doesn't mean anything. I don't know, it felt kind of romantic. It's not romantic. There's nothing romantic about it. God, you're such a narcissist. Don't even worry about it. From her self-titled sitcom The Mindy Project to the hilarious teen comedy Never Have I Ever, she always understands the assignment. Her modern reimagining of Four Weddings and a Funeral takes the premise of the beloved 90s movie and brings it up to date. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is great. Love is blind? There's a transatlantic romance and a lovable group of friends, but otherwise, the plot doesn't bear much resemblance to the original. Instead, Kaling borrows the concept and runs with it, using the format to explore the lives and romances of a talented and diverse ensemble. The result is a likable love story with plenty of laughs and a lot of heart. Can I see you again? Okay, but we're not going anywhere romantic, and I'm gonna dress like I'm on my period. Deal. Number 7. Younger If you loved Sex and the City and Emily in Paris, why not try another series by writer Darren Starr? Hello? Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 hey, 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 we don't wave a shoe. Never wave a shoe. First airing in 2015, Younger ran for seven seasons and gained a devoted following. Sutton Foster plays Liza Miller, aged 40, who recreates herself as a 26-year-old in order to move ahead in her career. Are you insane? Nobody's gonna believe that. People believe what you tell them. They believe the real housewives are real. They think the coconut wood is gonna shrink their ass. They'll believe you 26. The show is frothy, romantic, and fun, but it's smart too. The writers aren't afraid to tackle issues or explore generational differences, although never with judgment or a heavy hand. By the time we reached the final season, the show has become a full-blown rom-com, and it's all too easy to get invested in Liza's romantic entanglements. Only the truth from now on. Even if it hurts. Only the truth. 
Number six, Love Life. Love Life was supposed to be an anthology series with each season following a different character throughout their romantic life. Cute idea. Shame it got canceled after season two. Still, what we have is worth a watch. I would never miss Jim's birthday. I would, however, make a polite appearance and then skip out early. You are killing me. Our first protagonist is Darby Carter, played by Anna Kendrick. Her journey to self-discovery takes the viewer on a roller coaster of emotions. It's nothing we haven't seen before, but it's easy watching. The writing has a light comic touch, Kendrick is on form as always, and there's great chemistry between the central characters. Grant, I would like to say that I misjudged you. Oh yeah? I would really like to be your friend. You're just using me for my flask. Very much so. William Jackson Harper made for another charming lead in season two. We love that the show takes the time to explore friendships and other meaningful connections, as well as romantic love. This is one of the best days of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy for you, sis. <laughs> Number five, Heartstopper. It may be aimed at teens, but we'd recommend this heartwarming series to romantics of any age. For LGBTQ plus viewers, it's the sort of representation that past generations could only dream of. Would you kiss me? Set at a British all-boys school, Heartstopper is a coming-of-age tale based on Alice Oseman's graphic novel series. With such gentle storytelling and sensitive performances, it's impossible not to be swept up in the romance. The two central characters are so sweet that it's almost painful to watch them struggle. Don't worry, though. This is a happy story full of kindness and optimism. Was that not already established the last ten times we made out? Oh. <laughs> yeah? I don't know, we never, like, confirmed it. <laughs> Why are we like this? If you can survive all the romantic tension and fraught text message exchanges, you'll be well rewarded. For an American alternative, check out the Love, Simon spinoff, Love, Victor. I'm ready. Okay. I believe you. Number four, High Fidelity. The 2000 movie High Fidelity starred John Cusack as a fourth wall breaking record store owner with an unsuccessful love life. 20 years later, the story has been reimagined as a TV series with Zoe Kravitz in the lead role. Here's how not to plan a career. One, split up with girlfriend. Two, ditch college. Three, go to work in struggling record shop. Four, become owner of said record shop and stay there for the rest of life. Kravitz's mother, Lisa Bonet, played a love interest in the original movie. Rob may have transformed from a white man to a black woman, but otherwise the character is pretty much the same. To quote our loan Yelp review, decently curated cuts, unpretentious location, owner's a little rude, two and a half stars. This wisecracking music snob shouldn't be likable, but Kravitz, like Cusack, has enough charm and vulnerability to win us over. Nick Hornby books make perfect rom-com fodder. Think about a boy, Fever Pitch, and Juliet Naked. And High Fidelity has so much potential. It was canceled far too soon. All right, I'll take it. I believe when I fall in love with you, Number three, Starstruck. Co-written by New Zealand comic Rose Matafeo, who also stars, Starstruck is a perfect piece of comfort watching for the romantic comedy fan. Matafeo set out to create a proper rom-com, the kind that she grew up with, and she definitely delivered on that front. I specifically remember you saying, this is some of my best stuff. <laughs> yeah, I would never have said that. Yeah, that was the subtext of what you were saying. I was reading between the lines. The story follows Jessie, a hapless millennial, struggling to make a living in London. She falls into bed with a handsome stranger on New Year's Eve and later discovers that he's a real-life movie star. How could you not tell me this? What do you mean? Who you are, what you do! I did, actually. What do you do? I'm an actor. Oh, no offense. When are we serial? 
It's a screwball comedy full of romantic misunderstandings, quirky characters, and flirty banter. The laughs are genuine and the central protagonists are likable and easy to root for. What are you doing? If there are any Daily Mail photographers, I want to make it look like I'm having an argument. So. Oh, okay. This is a hot scoop. I'm going to send these in myself. <laughs> you are worryingly convincing <laughs> in this. Number two, Jane the Virgin. Like the 2000s classic Ugly Betty, Jane the Virgin takes inspiration from a telenovela and gives it a satirical spin. It may be tongue-in-cheek, but it's also unashamedly romantic. Jane knew in her heart that this was absolutely the last thing she should be doing. The absolute last thing. The premise is a little unusual. A 23-year-old virgin gets accidentally artificially inseminated by the gynecologist and decides to keep the baby. As an added complication, the father turns out to be both her boss and her teenage crush. Plus, he's married and she has a boyfriend. Who are the parents? I'm the father. She's carrying the baby. I should probably say yeah. to be the mother, technically. I'm well, he's my fiance. I'm the fiance. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go on biology. So you and you. Everyone else, out. It may sound like a fever dream, but the bizarre beginning sets the scene for a critically acclaimed comedy of errors. It manages to be both hilariously over the top and genuinely heartfelt. So sorry about earlier. No, no, I, I overreacted. Your book is so important. You're important. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Sex Lives of College Girls. Mindy Kaling strikes again with this fun, sex-positive comedy. You know those girls that are like, confident? Yeah, I hate them. Me too. I just pretended to be one of them. Okay, I walked right up to him and decided to be that <laughs> I don't know, I still think sex is better when it's with someone you love and it's an expression of your commitment. Dash and Lily, a cute miniseries that's perfect for the holiday season. Modern Love, an anthology series based on real life love stories. How come you sat over there with her when you had the option of the two tables? I just prefer to sit facing the direction we're going in, that's all. Now you're sitting the opposite way. Yeah, but I'm facing you. So my neurosis can take a back seat for a bit. It's not a big thing. How I Met Your Father. How I Met Your Mother, but gender swapped with Hilary Duff. So that's it. That's the night I met your father. But you guys didn't even get together. Get together? Oh, that's a much longer story. Love Sick, British rom-com with charm and heart, despite an unusual premise. No hate's a strong word, but you know how exhausting it is going out with someone who has the opposite opinion to literally every single person on every single topic. I mean, before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Sex and the City. Have you ever been in love? Absolutely. Could this list be complete without Sex and the City? The classic series caused a sensation when it was released and was nominated for over 50 Emmys during its six season run. Celebrated for its fashion, the show set a trend for rom-com protagonists with killer wardrobes, big city careers, and tangled love lives. Viewers laughed and cried with Carrie, Samantha, Miranda, and Charlotte. Don't laugh at me, but maybe we could be each other's soulmates. And then we could let men be just these great, nice guys to have fun with. A sequel series, and just like that, premiered in 2021. But Sex and the City is very much of its time. The iconic show is a time capsule of 90s nostalgia that captured a moment in fashion history and remains the definitive example of a romantic comedy series. Carrie, you're the one. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.